Hello everyone, I'm Tamsi Chen Yu in Kamisaki. I'm a postgraduate research student at the Graduate Institute of Building and Planning at National Taiwan University. Today I'm so excited to share my paper with you. My paper title is Facing Uncertainty for Localization. Hong Kong Post Pandemic Athletics Competitions. Through so all this presentation, I will begin by discussing the motivation behind this research, followed by an exploration of the research methodology. Finally, I will share the findings of this study. So why am I conducting this research? As you know, COVID-19 has been the pandemic in the world in the past few years. As it's a fall into an epidemic, sports competition undergo rearrangements. Besides, I find that different cities have to incorporate unique elements to facilitate the sport events. Tokyo Olympic is the most popular example in Asia or even in the world. In the Tokyo Olympics, there are different arrangements to combat with the local epidemic prevention policy, while also ensure the smooth progress of the competition. For example, there is a paybook to guide the participants and the match which is held after 9 p.m. are conducted as a closed-door event. These arrangements comply with the prevention disease the regulation of the Tokyo government to reduce the number of people staying in Tokyo at night. Since the Tokyo sample, this paper is more curious about the different approach in other city, especially Hong Kong, because it is the last Asian city to cancel the mask policy in the public areas. Also, Hong Kong is a geopolitical city. Due to time concentrates, I won't deeply to share the geopolitical significance of Hong Kong and how their policy affected by the central government in this presentation. But this part we saw is in my paper. Since the point of the geopolitical significance, I believe that there are must many sub-political relationship in Hong Kong. As a result, this paper wants to explore the sports event organizers' reaction to the consequence and impact of the pandemic and aims to analyze the differences in sport events before and after the pandemic and also to explore with their relationship with the government policy. So in this paper, participatory research is the main methodology to collect the data by observation, my own experience, news, and other articles. This paper also aiming to analyze the differences in sport events before and after the pandemic. So I think the comparative analyze method is good for this paper. I hope it can find that the Hong Kong's characteristic in organizing the sport event in different periods. Before moving on to the next section, I believe it is important to discuss when is post-pandemic in Hong Kong. After all, this article aims to explore post-pandemic sports event. While most mainstream discourse places the post-pandemic period after 2022, this paper considered this denomination to simplify the COVID-19 because I think the COVID-19 has not left us. It reminds the fluctuation and we are always take a risk of facing the next wave of the pandemic. Additionally, and Hong Kong government officially characterized the COVID-19 into five fluctuation periods. Therefore, pinpointing a precise post-pandemic time frame is challenging. Because of this, this paper categorize the situation and policy arrangements in Hong Kong at the time first. Particularly summarize the flexibility of the epidemic prevention measures 
and the number of the spot events. For details, please refer to this table. Based on the mentioned table, this paper mainly focuses on and divided it into three research periods. First, I will define the competition which hold on before the 2020 called out of COVID-19 period. Second, the time frame of sport events started to rearrange, defined as the beginning of the post-pandemic, most likely starting in the 2021. And the final time frame called adapted to the post-pandemic. This means that the people adjusting to the post-pandemic life and it's most likely starting in the 2022. Furthermore, this paper focuses on athletics competition held on in during these three periods. Given that athletics competition are typically organized on a large scale, they provide a more representative perspective. To facilitate comparison, the selected example of the athletics competition in this paper share similarities. All of them are organized by the Hong Kong China Association of Athletics Affiliates and held at the Zhengguan O Sports Ground. Based on the research goals and the design of this paper, the main research question is set as follows. What are the characteristics of the relationship among the stakeholders in sport competition during times of the uncertainty? Now, let's talk about the findings. Comparing athletics competitions in different periods will fill the changes. One is on the management aspect, which is about the rules. Another change is in the spatial aspect, which is about the zoning and circulation. In the management aspect, we can see that there are many rules added in the post-pandemic. This arrangement are very strict. In the left-hand side photo, you can see that there is a wristband as used to prove that the participants have passed the register counter and have registered before they participate in the event. On the photo of the timetable, you can see that there is earliest admission time, which is a restriction on the participants' attending time to prevent too many people are staying in the sports ground. There are the health deceleration forms similar to the registration form. The left-hand side is the hard copy, which is used in the period which is the beginning of the post-pandemic. The other one is the e-form. It's used in the later stage of the post-pandemic period. In the hard copy form, there are so many details to ask about the participants' physical condition, such as they ask them, if they have a fever or coach in the past 14 years, but the even hasn't. It's only asked the general question, just as have you traveled outside Hong Kong in the past 14 years, 14 days? It didn't ask about your personal physical condition. According to the format of the health deceleration form, it will present that the event organizer have relaxed the measures when implementing their arrangement. Not only did the entry arrangement have more limitation, but the competition rules were also. For example, everyone who participated in the athletics competition must wear the mask. The time only competition and warm up can be excluded. Moreover, in the post-pandemic athletics competition, the number of the people in each case had to change. When in the period which is out of the COVID-19, there are eight athletes in each hit. But in the beginning of the post-pandemic, only four athletes in each hit. 
However, in the later stage of the post-pandemic period, it's increased to the seven athletes in one hit. In the photos, you can see that the event organizers birthed all the athletes. There were a gap night between the athletes. As you can see, the changes are not immediately because they will based on the current situation to adjust their arrangement. After to talk about the change of management aspect, let's talk about the spatial aspect. This map is out of the COVID-19 period. At that time, the zoning and had no boundary. There is no regulation to limit the participants walk around in the non-competition competition area. Everyone can feel free to go out of the value, no matter whether they are coaches, athletes, staff, or audience. They only cannot do that in the competition area and the marshalling area. So in that time, the participant circulation have more freedom. Most worthy is the marshalling area. During the non-pandemic period, the marshalling area was indoor. However, in the post-pandemic period, the marshalling area turned to the outdoors because they thought it could prevent disease from spreading. Moreover, at the beginning of the post-pandemic, there was clear boundaries to define different areas. The entry regulations are very strict. There was only one door for entrance and exit. That's the red one. Also, different identities only can stay in their own area, such as the reporters cannot go downstairs and only can stay in the press area. That's the burden on the map. And the athletes also only can do their warm up in the outdoor warm up area no matter if the weather is good or bad. Since there were security personnel to monitor in each area entrance, the participant circulation was limited. The no color area on this mess is only for the competition's staff. And only them can go through in this passage. But when the people started to adapt in the post-pandemic, the zoning and circulation were changed. As you can see on this map, it seems didn't have a big change on it. Only the athletes warm-up area was extended, just like the yellow areas. And there was a um, arduous area that appeared. Also, the boundaries of the swimming were blurred. However, this is not the official setup. It means that the competition organizer has not changed their regulation. So you may ask why have this spatial change or the management change? Now I'm going to tell you what condition make this change happen. In this paper, I find that the users which up the participants were the main reason to make it. First, the competition organizer has to align with the government regulation. So it makes the athletics competition have more limitation, such as the requirement to wear the mask in compliance with the regulation of wearing of mask. The changes in the number of the participant in each heat as responding to the regulation of the prohibition on group gathering. So the competition organizer have compliance with the Hong Kong government, but on the other hand, I find that the event organizers start to comprom compromise the participants. They turn a blind eye in the last stage of the post pandemic. When they see someone crossing the boundary into other areas and do not have a reason to go through the area, they do not 
the organizer do not be extraordinary, and there is no immediate aversion. It can be seen that the implementation is not too strict in that period. Not only did the government policy and the attitude of the events organizer affect the change, but the other stakeholders were also affected by it. Although the most of time the athletes, coach, and the audience were already getting used to living post-pandemic period, some regulation followed the events were as normal, just like most of the time. They need to wear the mask in the sport event, but they will. They don't will think that is a problem. It is a normal, regular, or、uh, rules of their in their daily life. But when they cannot accept the unreasonable demands, like they don't have a enough areas to do warm up. <clears throat> They will started to recede. According to my observation and experience, the participants started to use their own method to try to challenge the official rules. For example, the athletes, coaches, and the audience were concealing and exchanging their identity when they entered the different areas. In my observation, some coach want to, uh, looking for their athletes warm up. They will ask the other athlete to borrow the athlete's identity card to enter the warm up area, because, uh, the identity card doesn't have a photo of the athlete, so they can borrow it to the artist, and. Also, some supporter want to support the athletes in personal, in person. So they will borrow the athlete's identity card to go to the stands to watch the game. So there were long official audience area that appeared at the last stage post pandemic. Based on the above findings, it can be concluded that there is a co. Construction phenomenon in the post-pandemic sports competition. The relationship between the sport values and the different types of user is not binary. Not only the top-down approach, but also the bottom-up approach. They mutually influence each other. Sometimes the user will comply. Comply with the central government policy, and sometimes the participant will be based on the situation on that time. So the relationship between them is complex. To conclude, whether it's a policy change or shift in participant actions, these elements undergoing change contribute to the event organizer uncertainty. Based on the analysis, it can be concluded that when sport event organizer facing the uncertainty, they are action as needed based on the current situation to adjust their arrangement and also follow the local government policy. Furthermore, participants' response. And falls gradually as they adapt to the change over time. Therefore, adhering to the usual practice of localization reminds the strategy for the participants in sport event to navigate the uncertainty. Um, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.